Kaz Elgar is only the beginning. WoW's new expansion. Now, if you don't know about Kaz Elgar, it's been rumored to be this new place that the Dwarven people are talking about. Uh, you know, Kaz Modan, it seems like they like to put Kaz in front of their things. Let's see what Belialar has to say about this new land that we could be adventuring to in our next expansion. I come to you with a bit of forbidden knowledge because, well, the uh, the name of something from World of Warcraft's next expansion has actually Hey, Krell, thanks, man. I appreciate Blizzard's that. Blizzard's nice locked vault. And uh, yes, this is another example of Blizzard making a little bit of a data whoopsie and that leading to us knowing at least something about the next expansion. And that means today it's time for a deep dive. You're going to learn a hell of a lot about where World of Warcraft is going next and the sorts of things nice. that it will entail. The lore. To be honest with you, some of it... Yeah, could actually be pretty damn cool. But first, there is something for you to play today. Squarespace.com forward slash Bellular Gaming, where they've actually got two amazing new features that come together perfectly, right? One of them is called Blueprint, and it lets you make is it a, a leak, custom though? template, uh, right? You know, not so really. These aren't, these aren't really leaks. These are more of like uh, speculations based on some of the stuff that's been being that data mined, but there's no site, actual right? leak from Blizzard, no. There. And then you can easily add more pages to your site. And then where the magic, where it starts to come What's going on is there's a story about um, the Titans sending some stone boys to this land. And they received the curse of flesh while they were there. So this is like this new place where there's still shit going on with the old gods and stuff. comes in. Because the web can be hard, and often that means you can't lay out something. Come, that maybe wouldn't let us from. lay waste to, to this realm. You can see me Another YouTube here, subscriber. Right? Thank you, block. Harrison. I can lay out the elements wherever I want with so much more flexibility. Than oh, the boys before. is a great show. It is a killer feature that, paired with Blueprint, offers an unparalleled site building experience that is just so easy to get started. It all works with their e-commerce, mailing lists, memberships, all their features all built into the platform. And you can start building your site today for free with my link down below and use code Bellular Gaming for 10% off an annual plan when you're ready to send that site live. Great. Squarespace use code Bellular Gaming. Bellular Gaming. There you go. Okay, Algarian. Algarian Stormrider. Yes. You've heard of the database. That is the name of our next expansion's heroic edition mount. The Algarian mount that we'll get. does sound new, but it's actually not. In the revamped old man, this report was found, detailing the fate of an earthen expedition sent to investigate an anomaly. Earthens sent into a fisher who okay. developed their own society in a location we're not currently aware of, and they call it Kaz Algar. What's going on? Well, first up, this fisher was classified as anomalous in the source text. And second, the flavor text of the item reads, this probably should be designated as classified. And uh, as we'll learn later, okay. there's a very specific category of information that Odin would want to be classified. Okay. Another wrinkle to that is Uldaz. Uldaz is a Titan facility that was mentioned by the main... Yes, the Uldaz Titan facility. I think, again, right now, remember this, if you remember, we got with the Epic Edition right now, we got the um, the Dreamweaver mount or whatever it was called. It was that green dragon, right? So this is the new mount that will likely come with the Epic Edition. And this this whole uh, Algarian Stormweaver or whatever the hell it's being called, the, it has to do with this place that these dwarves have supposedly discovered. And like I said, the Titans evidently sent some of these stone uh, dwarves. Now remember, the stone dwarves are like what the Titans created before the Curse of Flesh, where they became the dwarves that we know today. And for the first time ever, we're seeing the Curse of Flesh happen again. These stone boy dwarves went over there and became regular dwarves. They became fleshy boys. So uh, there's evidently some influence. Now remember, the, the one who, who is known for giving the Curse of Flesh is Yag saran we haven't seen yogg in a little while. Who knows what he's up to? Uh, you know, we, we know that we've dealt with some of the other guys, but yogg coming back, maybe for this next expansion. Maybe we're getting a dwarf-themed yogg expansion. Who knows? Could, could be. Agent of Vitality during BFA. And uh, that was in the very same line that she revealed Uldorus to us. Uldorus is the name of the Titan facility in the Dragon Isles, also known as Tierhold. And I suppose you could think Kaz ends with a Z, Aldaz ends with a Z. It's probably mm -hmm. enough for Blizzard to say they're tied together. 
<laughs> now, even more in-game evidence has been found, though, such as a recent PTR build adding Storm Rider Storm Hammers uh, to the game that are encrypted. Uh, many other dwarf-related items of, as well. Yeah, we saw these dwarf the helmets the being data mined. We talked about and these. have also been found. And of course, all this Storm Rider stuff brings one image to mind. It is this image, yes. right? One of the original World of one Warcraft. One of the OGs. Mode. Don't forget, too, they added, you know, all these griffin mounts? They added dragon riding animations to all of them. That was another big clue that like, oh, why are they, why are they going in and re-adding all the dragon riding animations to these boys? Probably because they're going to be gr riding griffins around all over the place in uh, what is going to be the new expansion. Who knows, maybe we're going to get griffin customization. That'd be pretty badass. Loading screens, uh, dwarf on a griffin, big hammer, all very cool. And rather curiously, Blizzard recently added dynamic flying animations for griffins, and that does mean that at the very least, if all of this yeah, is fake, just said well, that, yeah. your wild hammer clan dwarf fantasies may yet come true for your own character. Now, before I dive into all of this, I think we need to get a little bit of context and understand some other things. Underground. Now, before I dive fully into all this, there's a little bit of out of game context that will be useful. Towley heavily suggests underground elements in our next expansion. This is what he says. He says, everyone keeps talking about the South Seas expansion. I keep telling y'all, y'all are thinking too much uh, above the seas. And he goes on. Now, the clip was deleted, which is a little bit suspicious. Mm. And while he does sometimes <laughs> like to play with people dispensing little drops and hints of information, um, it is the case that he does have many friends at Blizzard. He's hung out yeah. with many of these people in person. And it's also true that Kaz Algar is within a fissure. So yeah underground there's also been some but would we talk. really go underground again right now like we i feel like with abra i'm kind of undergrounded out you know like i've done i've done it i went underground for an entire patch i want to come now i'm glad we're going to the emerald dream next so we're not going to be underground anymore but how undergroundy are we going to get i don't know i mean at least the new tech has allowed like us to go underground without loading screens and everything like they like they did in, in this whole abra uh, you know zone and everything but uh, underground doesn't really get me excited. I like to see cool skyboxes, I'll be honest. We'll see. Maybe I'm to, wrong. Uh, maybe what maybe will collapse be cool. in Silithus because of the sword that was stuck into the plant. Oh, there's a sword in yeah, Silithus? Yeah, lots of hell? things, but at the very least, Kazalgar in a fissure, somebody in the know talking about underground elements in a deleted clip. Okay, what's going on? There's a hell of a lot of connections. I'm just going to dive into them. Number one, Chris Madsen is returning. Uh, number two, Avalorn was mentioned in the same set of documents that contained what we know of Kaz Algar. And I know at least a few people have yeah, uh, been watching. That was, that was our when we thought it was going to be a pirate expansion. We thought we were going to go to this new land called Avalorn on the other side of Azeroth. Video, I think, in light Probably not going to happen now. Now, Kaz Algar as a thing, I think, is rock solid, given we know about the Algarian Stormrider. And I think that means that other information found within the same set of texts from Ulderman, well, it's now gained that uh, sort of great, uh, you know, importance. I don't know how right? that would solve the sword One of the issue things either. is, in a very tangible sense, true. So to me, that raises the importance of Avalorn. And it also highlights Odin, because Odin, of course, is the main speaker he's in the, many of those texts. Of, wow. he's, and Odin he's a is a jerk, character actually. who's cropped up from time to time recently, but he's not been tremendously active in the story. And remember I said I would uh, mention Odin and uh, trying to keep things hush-hush? Well, um, the Curse of Flesh. So in yes. the report, obviously, the yes. Curse of Flesh is talked about. Now, of course, we only call it the Curse of Flesh because we are coming from that perspective as, uh, you know, many, in many cases anyway, like at least ex-Titan uh, beings or sort of aligned broadly with the forces of order. Yeah, maybe now, we should call it the, the Blessing of Flesh. Of flesh would be called the because the Curse of Flesh essentially also gave us free will. You know, the, old, the, the Titans always wanted us to see the old gods as the bad guys, but the, we were like basically just slaves to the Titans. Until we got the Curse of Flesh, and that was when we got the, uh, you know, we got free will. So maybe, maybe the old gods aren't the bad guys, I don't know. The gift of flesh, and in many ways you can see why it is There's a bit of a gift. gift. Of flesh, it right. seems to give us all these cool things like the free blessing will, of flesh. not yeah. being a robot, and uh, also death. Which kind of gets us the Shadowlands, but I won't talk about that point, uh, because I don't want to make everybody sad. Now, what basically happened is these Earthen went into the fissure, 
and then seemingly via the Curse of Flesh, they uh, came out kind of being like dwarves with the Dwarven Society. Right. So look, point is, there's maybe more to the Curse of Flesh uh, than we know. There was perhaps yeah. more going on in that fissure than uh, we have been, uh, well, we haven't really been led to believe uh, anything, right? This is something that the flavor text says should, uh, you know, be classified. And uh, in those texts, uh, the edicts of the prime designate, we basically learn how Odin says, okay, all those advancements of the Black Empire, yeah, we're gonna lie about those. They didn't happen, it was only the bad stuff. Which, of course, right. completely informs the perspective that uh, most have had in the game, right? So, well, it, it goes to say in real life, it's the same thing, right? The victors write history. Isn't, it, isn't there like some kind of saying like that, that history is written by the victors? You know, so the Titans, they t you know, they technically won against the old gods when they came here and they did the whole fight and ripping, uh, you know, um, ripping the old gods out of the planet, creating all that shit. They basically won. So they wrote history, essentially. They wrote it from their perspective and from their perspective, the old gods were bad guys, right? So they wanted to us to feel the same way. So that's that's what they told us. They told us those lies. Uh, again, if if any world war had ended any other way, history would be written in a completely different way, right? Who knows? The allies would have been the bad guys in that in that case. It would have been completely flipped. Uh, but here, it's the Titans who won. Now, all this talk of fissures, of course, has got me thinking about the Earth. You know, maybe about elements. And when you know it, Eridicron is the primal earth dragon. Yeah. Uh, potentially a dragon infused with, uh, you know, earth by Tyr himself. Because what was Tyr doing in the Dragon Isles in uh, a capacity of a, a dude who worked for Odin? Oh, And he Thrall is on the front of the cover of BlizzCon. And Thrall is a shaman. He deals with the elements. So yeah, that makes sense too. You know, infusing different dragons with elements. Tyr is a character that has featured heavily in Dragonflight, with the restoration of his body very likely happening in 10.2. And, of course, we've got the whole, you know, Order of Tyr's Hand quest that recently dropped in yeah, the Tyr's game. Yeah, Tyr's Hand's coming now, back, that's right. Tyr, while he did follow the Titan's orders, also took many risks. He lived and uh, eventually died very honorably, most would say. And really, when push came to shove, he went to bat for the dragon aspects that, over time, he grew to become very fond Tyr's of. Tyr's actually and, a fact, great guy. The uplifting of these dragons into the dragon aspects was something that pissed Odin off so much that Odin essentially rage quit. He removed his area of Ulduar from uh, Ulduar. <laughs> he flew it up into the sky and then he became set on doing the uh, job of the dragons himself by creating the Valajar who rode enslaved storm dragons because he really doesn't like uh, dragons. Of course, joke was on him. He yeah. really... Um, the storm dragons, by the way, are coming into uh, World of Warcraft dragon flight. Like, again, right now we're going to have like Rathian and... Um what's her name, uh, Viranoth, they're going to ride around and they're going to get other dragons to join our cause in 10.2, and they're going to go to the Nether Drakes. That's why we're going to get a bunch of Nether Drake customizations, and they're going to go get the Storm Drakes. That's like the plan that they're going to have. So they're going to get other Drakes to come to the Dragon Isle. Like, hey, the Dragon Isles are back. Come back, guys. And they're going to join us in the Emerald Dream. So uh, that storyline could come back into play. A lot of awful things to Halia, and Halia locked him up there, meaning that, uh, you know, he wasn't really able to do jack shit. And I bring this up because Odin, obviously, since I think Legion the Titans is a will return who, in the uh, next you know, expansion, is, is in King the Julian. game and is relevant, right? Uh, now, by the time That's of his demise, plan. given how Odin hated the dragons and rage quit and everyone, um, I don't actually think Tyr would have liked Odin that much. I think their characters are yeah, right now in natural opposition. And I think if Blizzard wants to tell a good story, they don't have to go and talk about, oh, the force of order. No, they have to have the cool guy that we like, Tyr, um, you know, get, get in a big cool fight with a person that uh, maybe we don't like as much, Odin. And now, in terms of power, I would think Odin is much more powerful than Tyr. I, I think, like, on the power ranking, he's he's higher than him. So if this fight ever did go down, it'd probably be us, along with Tyr, fighting against Odin. Because uh, Odin, I think, would be more powerful. I hope we do fight Odin eventually. He's a dick. I do want to kill him. And, um, you know, that that then gets to be the story. And uh, they can have a story probably instead of just talking cool about too. parts of a chart. Right, it would be a lot better. Now, speaking of elements, uh, you've also got Farax element fire and how it has a major dwarven connection. Because the legendary fire lord Ragnaros was very foolishly summoned in too early, too soon, some would say, to be at full power and he was defeated in the Molten Core. Seven years later, we went to the Firelands and uh, we were kind of doing that at the head of the Earthen Ring and uh, we defeated him for good. Soon 
after that, Smolderon rose uh, to prominence and became the new Fire Lord, and free yeah. from Ragnaros, the Dark Iron Dwarves kind of reintegrated with dwarf kind. Their leader, Moira, joined I up. I believe with- Smolderon is also in the new raid, I think. I could be wrong, but I believe he is, along with, you know, the Druids of the Flame and everyone. They're coming into the new raid in uh, in 10.2. So uh, I think we're going to see more smolder on storyline. Council of the Three Hammers, I believe now the uh, you know the Iron Forge heir is uh, like you know it is a, a dark hammer. So uh, quite a lot of things going on there. Thing is though, I think not the all the dark dwarves iron dwarves cool. like this whole peace and friendship thing, and so as part of that, the Cult of Ragnaros was formed. What did the Cult of Ragnaros want? Yeah, bit of a hint. It's Ragnaros. Lizard so, loves bringing when bosses back, so we could see Ragnaros invaded, again. In the Legion expansion, Smolderon allied with the Earthen Ring, because a great threat brought uh, everybody together, albeit for a short time. Smolderon soon went missing, and uh, it's kind of left as a bit of a dangling plot thread from the Dark Iron Dwarf uh, Heritage Armor quest. But of course, the elemental plane of fire was really not impacting anybody's life. The world spun round, and uh, we kind of had the whole Battle for Azeroth thing to go and do. Now, patch 10.2 marks Smolderon's return, where now he, yep. along with a bunch of that new Druids right. of the Flame, are yes. siding with Farak. Uh, yeah. Elemental Lords disliking Titans? That is not a new thing. Elemental Lords being um, friendly with, uh, you know, the the sort of primal dragon group. Uh, that, I think, actually does make a, a lot of sense. But the thing is, Smolderon is uh, almost certainly killed in patch 10.2. That yeah, would now mean that the Cult the raid, of Ragnaros so we'll will have the perfect opportunity to, uh, you know, if we bring the mechanics, back their right. boy Ragnaros somehow. And, of course, the Cult of Ragnaros are Dark Iron Dwarves. Dwarves. Uh, yeah. Hazalgar. Then, of course, there's a whole selection of dwarf assets. That Look, I'm down for a dwarf expansion. I am. I feel like we've gotten, you know, the whole undead forsaken storylines. We fleshed that out. We did, obviously, the night elf storyline's been fleshed out a lot this expansion. I, I'm, I'm good for a dwarf expansion, for sure. I think, I've always thought dwarf lore was cool. I always liked dwarves. The dark iron dwarves in particular, aesthetically, I think are very cool. And uh, they have good music. Good beer, you know the, the dwarves and all, all in all, I would be down for a for an expansion that really gets into their lore, gets into their you know beliefs and all that stuff, and maybe some new dwarfin classes. I don't know or or races. I, I I'm good with that. I think that'd be a cool expansion. Have made it into the game, Something but haven't, that we haven't been really used. Gotten. Why do we need a new bronze beard looking siege engine? We do need a Why better human Blizzard king. Why would those yeah, assets? It Yes, it all is very suspicious. Wow, so, cool. what do we got, right? We've got Titan Keepers likely in conflict upon Tyr's return. We've got maybe Ragnaros coming back. We've got Azeroth in peril as Eridicron and Zalatath um, either make their move in the new expansion or as a direct result of whatever they do at the end of this expansion. We've also got Chris Look, Metzen. And, and ter- and Chris Metzen coming back, yes. In terms of fighting Ragnaros again, I mean, shit, I've killed Kalthazad 13 times. I don't see why I can't kill Ragnaros three times. I'm fine with it. Whatever. As long as, you know, it's, it's kind of cool. That's fine. Uh, Ragnaros coming back. We just got his shoulders not too long ago, if you guys don't remember. Like, his shoulders became available in the game. Will they bring him back? It's, you know. Blizzard's done shit like that before, so I don't see why not. The speculation's hilarious. It's good, man. It's fun to do. Being back, not only does he play Thrall, the world shaman, um, you know, he's also a father of Warcraft setting and foundational stories. I'm so excited to watch him at BlizzCon again. full-time as executive creative director knows how to the hype game. You I mean, it wouldn't be insane to think, ah, cataclysm, but good. <laughs> but that's actually not all. Uh, I originally was going to call the next part of this video Chekhov's Gun. Now I have to call it Chekhov's Guns. Okay, Chekhov's Gun. It's a very simple, like, talented screenwriting. It's basically right. Look, if in, like, say, Act 1, you're going to have a character put a gun on the mantelpiece or something like that, the audience will expect that gun to be fired or something to happen with it, right? The point being, why would you put this information in if you're not going to use it? This kind of thing. Oh, you mean like the giant goblin cannon that was put into the game and never fired? You're talking about that one? Yeah. Uh, these laws don't apply to WoW. They, we got plenty of shit in the game that's never been used. You know, the, the foreshadowing, um, that's a pretty important part of telling a cohesive narrative. 
you know, that flows together, that's layered, that has that tension, shit was supposed that to be is fired escalating. In BFA, supposedly. World Never Warcraft happened. has many, 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 many of these Chekhov's guns. And I've already touched in many of the most relevant ones, right? You know, Khazal Gar, the uh, yeah, I story would think Anduin has to come back in the next expansion. The Dwarven population, Redicron, Zalatath, Odin, Tyr, Avalorn. Well, I've actually got a few more Chekhov's guns for you. Azeroth has another landmass. It's, uh, yeah, really there. Uh, basically, right. Kalimdor, remember, before Kalimdor was exploded into multiple smaller landmasses, Kalimdor was not Azeroth's only continent. This is something that was confirmed by Neltharian's research. Yeah. Uh, we found that in the Forbidden Reach. This is why we thought we were getting a pirate expansion. All this talk about some other land on the other side of the world, and then you had that pirate forget his name, uh, he came back, that night elf pirate, he came back from the other side talking about how, oh, he's seen the other side, and now he wants to get a big crew together to go back again and explore it. All this shit was happening, and we were like, oh, we're, that's what's going to happen, pirate expansion. And then the tweet from Mikey Barra came out, and he said, no pirates. So It's just another one of those things that Odin scrubs we'll see. in history, that there is another continent, <laughs> obviously. You know, what happens when you sail east of east, west of west on the Azeroth map? The answer is something kills you and you don't come back. The, the Night Squall. The Night Squall. That was his name. I just remembered. That's him right now. He's being shown on the screen. He had gone to the other side and supposedly the Titans had set expeditions to the other side and all kinds of stuff. And they always never came back. They just died. Except this guy. This badass pirate, the Night Squall, supposedly went to the other side and came back and lived to tell the tale. Unless you're a certain night elf, who I'm going to talk about in a bit. Also, we have the Sword in Silithus. I did like Sword's uh, comments to one of Tauli's uh, tweets, saying, you know, hmm, that sword, when it went down, would it not kind of uh, clap some structures, you know? Could it do anything uh, real relating to Cthulhu? Hmm. I think it's an interesting theory. It is. Uh, of course, we've gotten this It's off. always been a meme that that sword has been there. We've never done anything about it. Maybe we're finally going to explore what's going on with the sword. And Azoth almost certainly had a plan for after his apparent demise. And this is something heavily the demise suggested that he knew about because evidently. we confirm to Nazoth what timeline would come to pass by meeting him when we traveled yes. back in time to the Black Empire. Still, the coolest quest in all of Dragonflight was that opening quest. We went back to the Black Empire and we, to we basically, Nazoth can look into our minds. So he looked into our minds from that timeline and saw our timeline where we defeat him. So did we really defeat him? Nazoth would have known what was coming. I don't know. The ultimate planner, I really hope they play on this lore more, because I think Nazoth deserves a better ending than he got. Meaning that as of his defeat in Battle for Azeroth, right, whenever we killed him in BFA, true, Nazoth had information that we did not. That's probably very relevant. We then have the Night Squall, this Night Elf pirate warlord dude who has returned from beyond the Forbidden Sea, right? Which is a pretty yes. major thing. Um, likely then he's returned from that unknown continent, maybe for Avalorn, maybe they're the same thing, who knows? Um, but he's now forming a grand host from across the world. Blizzard president Mike Guevara said it's not going to be a pirate expansion. He said no pirates. Yeah, no pirates. Well, that no. doesn't mean that the Night Squall can't uh, or, or right. won't arrive in a patch. There's other things too, like there's a new Klaxi queen. What's she doing? The Klaxi obviously served the old Klaxi. gods. Then, Cthun and yogg true bodies were never destroyed. Old god bodies are very big. Yashar's uh, body was destroyed by Amon Thul. Right, ripped uh, of him out course, of the planet. that will have just... Um, yeah freed Yashar's essence to go back to its home plane. And the same goes for Nazoth, right? Because yes, the, the void dudes go back to uh, the, the void plane when they die. I suppose a bit like how demons, you know, they go back to the Twisting, twisting Nether, Nether when they yeah. die. And the only way to uh, truly kill a demon is by killing it within the Twisting Nether. Um, so you could actually say that by killing Nazoth, who was sort of stuck in his big fleshy prison, Nazaroth, we actually um, kind of broke him out of prison, and he clearly had a plan for that. Anyway, in essence, uh, here, yeah. uh, they were kind of set free from their titan bonds when destroyed, and the main bodies of yogg Saron and Cthulhu are sort of still... So yogg Saron's the one that I think we will get some taste of in the next expansion, considering this whole curse of flesh thing coming back, because that's his thing. That's supposedly what he Aaron does. Nazaroth. And while I'm on the topic of Void, the what boy. else spoke to uh, Naltharian and Sarkarath, right? Who are the other voices? Because when we defeated Nazoth, 
Illyria remarked that the whispers hadn't stopped, that no, what happened is new whispers, new voices joined the chorus. So I'm sure she's going absolutely bananas. So this is, uh, I think, as you can see, a humongous collection of very easy to hit plot elements. Um, and almost all of these are things that you could see be tied to content. Most Maybe definitely. that sword has pierced the prison of Cthune, allowing for him to rise again. Maybe Zalatath and Eridicron start the timer and the Titans return, right? Some epic showdown between the roided up chads that are Odin and Tyr, right? Maybe the two of them fighting, the Tyr, uh, you know, the Tyr's hand uh, being on our side. Maybe Thrall sort of yeah, coming back maybe, in a major maybe way. More class, more maybe more Paladin class Maybe some elemental chaos. But okay, let's um, try to set some expectations. Okay, all right. Set us straight, Bell. Okay, so now that you know all of that lore, I do have one example. So Mr. Pandaria's Collector's Edition mount was called the Imperial Quillen. Now, yes, that matched the Mogu. And yes, the Mogu played Mogu a really awesome. big role in Mr. Pandaria. But could you have predicted the Siege of Orgrimmar if the name Imperial Quillen was datamined at the end of Cataclysm? No. The answer is uh, almost certainly not. No. Now, that means that you should not consider the next expansion a known quantity based on the information in this video. What I'm merely doing sure. here is uh, collecting the various toys strewn around the floor and putting them back in Metzen's box so that we can say, look at all the toys in the box. Where could this go? <laughs> And I suppose that's where I need to bring things to the end of this video. It all comes back to Eridicron's words. He says that he doesn't want to just control Azeroth or anything like that. No, uh, she's right. by means to an end for him. Eridicron, he lives for the war. He, as with Farak, uh, is far beyond the point of actually caring about any of the original goals of their cause, right? He doesn't He's give a, a shit about that. He just and wants to fight. Uh, that realization is what just turned Varanoff to our side because she realized, right. hang on a second, I'm doing it, do doing all this all these mean things, for all of these reasons that I have. He doesn't seem to have them. He just seems to have went mad. And that's why Viranoth decided to be our friend. So, Eridicron uh, will want to hold Azeroth's life. Just, a, just another example of Blizzard saying, boys will be boys. Look at these two guys. They just want to fuck shit up. But the girl, she figured it out. She's a good one. In his hands, so that he can force the hand of his most hated enemy, the Titans, and presumably kill them. Azeroth, whatever she is, is the greatest of her kind. And for the Titans, turning her into one of them means victory over all the things that they oppose, right? right. Her power can uh, really mean the end of the Void God threat, destroy all demon kind, maybe enslave light to their will, transform nature of all worlds into a garden. She is the key to absolutely everything that they desire. So as this hastens, we may see the likes of Azeroth awakening, Titans returning, Illidan returning, Sargeras too. Or yeah, Sargeras and Illidan be teamed up. A little bit different. And I think this will be pretty major to many of you. So, Warcraft has had other worlds and alien races since the orcs crashed through the dark portal and sacked Stormwind. Yeah, right. Warcraft 2 saw us control Elyria, Turalyon, and Khadgar as they ventured off into the world of Draenor. Oh, yeah. Elements like these are classic Warcraft, right? Going through a portal to another planet out in space is core Warcraft. It's been a part of this franchise since long before WoW even came out. However, in those times, it was always very firmly focused on what those things meant to the world that we cared about, the factions we cared about, and, you know, they weren't really glossing over the world that we care about to start spending right. a whole bunch of time getting into the arcane, gory details of the background lore. That's kind of a messy sentence, but I think you get my point here, right? Blizzard can do these things in a way that doesn't involve like, oh, we're going to go to wherever and then we're going to have a full Voidlands expansion. They can do stuff without that. I mean, I know lots I of agree. us I don't want think we're ready for Voidland Land expansion yet. And you could kind of do it sort of like this. So number one, Ian said that a world revamp is likely. Now, I do think that 11.0 is too soon to do a world revamp. I agree. I think they're setting up a world revamp, by the way, for the next expansion, not the one we're getting. Uh, we're, not the one that's being announced at this BlizzCon, the one that'll come after it. But to set it up, I hope they do some kind of lore play that kind of makes it possible. I don't know. There's different ways they could do it, but I, I definitely see it happening. It is coming. It's been confirmed that it is coming. But I don't think it's this next expansion that's going to happen. It's the one after. Revamp. Chris Metzen is said to be working on the next yeah, adventures of Warcraft, ensuring that those that's adventures are new ideas that still feel Warcraft. 
Perhaps 11.0 can go hard on the toys in the box that I've spent today's video uh, telling you about, right? But they can do that without jumping the shark. You can end this without the Titans and Sargeras and the Void Gods and everything just appearing and saying hello. Or I suppose you could deal with all those in the final patch. But the yeah. point is, you can maybe just leave the Titans' arrival as a big thing in the lore. That's looming, right? You can do that. You can do the same. You know, you can have the Titans returning as being like Sargeras was in the classic through Legion era, you know, of sort of Thanos to Marvel, right? Yeah. Um, if Chris is there to ensure that the future of Warcraft is still Warcraft, I mean, what way, uh, what better way to have a true sequel to Vanilla WoW than, uh, you know, a, a world revamp? A WoW that, too? as Ian said in a recent interview, wouldn't make the same mistakes as Cataclysm. Yes. I do think that that's the best possible timeline, and to be honest with you, with all of the assets that have been sneaking into the game, I do think it's something that is going to happen. You can watch this video about that next. Overall, I think that these fairly obvious plot points could actually be the next thing that we will see and that after that the revamp will come and uh, in a way you could only yeah, see that as the next era of WoW launching yeah that's what i think anyway so let me know what you think i hope you at least uh, enjoyed learning about all these little lore details and how they may um you know actually play a role in this next expansion that has been heavily teased by the algarian storm rider being datamite yes. that is it for me thank you for watching Good stuff and i'll see you next time yeah, another good video. I definitely agree with a lot of this. I mean, I think we're getting some type of dwarf expansion. Could it have something to do with the Sword and Seal this? That'd be cool. Also, world revamp stuff, not until 12.0. And uh, yes, the old gods continuing to be a thread, a main thread in our expansions going forward. I see that happening for sure. Good video. Nice to see.